Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain another physical parameter measurement uh, that is moisture. In the previous two videos, I have explained about the measurement of physical parameter force and followed by another parameter that is proximity. So in the similar way, the third physical parameter was a moisture. Moisture is nothing but the water content present in the vapor, like vapor present in the atmosphere. So this is the device. This is the device how to measure a moisture present in any device. Suppose if you have any uh, wood. Suppose if you are expecting to measure the moisture present in this wood, any material, any material you can consider and keeping these two points here, inserting these two in this wood, then it shows some reading that is depending upon the moisture content present in the wood. So like this, wherever you want to measure the moisture, then you have to keep these two needles, then it shows the moisture content present in the particular material or environment. So moisture content measurement is easy. Simply determine the amount of water in the product and compare that to the weight of everything else in the product. So if what I told you already, moisture is nothing but it is used to find the amount of water content uh, present in the particular product or environment or atmosphere, wherever it is, uh, removing everything else and keeping the weight of water only in the entire thing. In fact, it is actually a difficult and complex process to obtain an accurate percentage of water in a product. Suppose if I ask you to calculate the water, uh, water uh, content present in an environment or area, then it is somewhat complex process. It is not easy to measure the water content present in that particular area. So, how to use the, um, how to go for the measurement of this moisture, what are the different techniques we need to adopt for the measurement of this moisture content in any particular area or environment. So, the first one is weight loss on drying. <coughs> so, by drying the thing, whatever you are going to measure, suppose if would I ask you to give and calculate the moisture in that particular wood, then by keeping, by drying that particular device, we can get the content of moisture. So, weight loss, what we need to do is weight has to be reduced. Weight has to be reduced when keeping the water content alone. So, weight has to be go, uh, reduced by drying that particular material. So, weight loss on drying, that is the first and foremost thing we can do and calculate the moisture content in any device by drying a product. So weight loss on drying, weight loss on drying and you know this point, weight loss on drying is nothing but suppose if you take any wood, okay, or pour some water on this wood, let us consider a wood, pour some water on this wood, what happens, it becomes weight, it is weighty, it is having more weight when it is wet. So keep it in the sunlight and uh, leave it for one or two days then what happens it be, uh, it becomes dried and weight becomes reduced definitely weight becomes reduced for the dried item okay so whenever the water content is there in a particular product definitely the weight is more and weight. when there is no water definitely the weight is different the difference between that weight and this weight if you take the difference between the weight before and after drying then we can get what is the amount of moisture or water content present in that wood. Correlate electrical or dielectric changes to moisture levels. So optical and electromagnetic energy, the earliest and still most widely used method is weight loss on drying. This is what I explained now. In this technique, the sample weight at the start is recorded. So first, what is the weight in the starting we have uh, noted down. Later, after drying, what is the weight we will note down. So the weight difference between these two can be recorded. So that that is the weight of, due to the water content present in the product. After drying, the sample weight is recorded. The difference in these two weights represent the moisture lost. People use many combinations of equipment to get at this widely 
perform test. Some tester use a balance and a hot plate, other, others a balance and an oven. So there are different other uh, other different methods we can follow. So some are using a balance and a hot plate and others balance and an oven. Today technology has made it easy to use an integrated balance and drying method to automate the procedure. The technique is often referred to as loss on drying or LOD. So this technique what we are using for the measurement of the uh, moisture content the first and foremost thing is nothing but l o d loss on drying what we are losing here weight so loss on weight so loss of weight after drying that is l o d loss on drying so what we are losing here weight so electrical moisture levels that is another system for measure moisture detection is based on the fact that many materials change electrical or dielectric characteristics depending upon the moisture level in the material. So suppose if you are taking any device that is having some internal electrical characteristics, suppose uh, a device consider the same wood what I explained in the previous case, same wood. Okay, previously when there is no water content in this wood, it simply acts like a insulator. It simply acts like insulator because it cannot be used as a power transmitting device. The current will not flow through this wood when it is completely dried. Keeping in mind that when it is completely dried, there is no current flowing through this wood. It simply acts like insulator even if we are applying some current here if we touch anywhere on this wood it will not get shock it, it will not give any shock to us but if the same wood which is acted previously as insulator now some moisture content is there in this wood then what happens its characteristics are completely changed now it is having some moisture content means definitely some current passes through this wood and now it is acting like a conductor or semiconductor. So the internal characteristics of electrical characteristics of this particular device, the dielectric character, previously it is dielectric medium, no current will be flowing through this one. So because of this moisture content, the dielectric characteristics of this particular device will vary and the current starts flowing. So that is because of the moisture content present in the wood. So most of these instruments measure changes in resistance, conductivity or capacitance because these techniques are measuring an indirect effect of moisture calibration is very necessary. So here whatever the electrical physical quantity we are changing, whatever the physical quantity we are expecting to measure, always those physical quantities when you are converting, getting them back into the electrical quantity, you should always consider the changes with respect to either of these three parameters, either uh, resistance, capacitance or any inductance, okay, conductivity. So resistance, capacitance, inductance, these three parameters will be calculated in terms of electrical quantity based on the mechanical or physical quantity variations with respect to the environmental conditions. Okay, suppose whatever the moisture content that has been changed, okay, that has been changed in the environment or a device or a product where you want to measure, simply the resistance of that particular device may vary or capacitance of the device may vary or the conductance or inductance may be vary depending upon the changes in this particular resistance and we are expecting the electrical quantity to be <coughs> varied so because these techniques are measuring an indirect effect of moisture indirect effect of moisture calibration is necessary what do you mean by calibration what do you mean by calibration? So calibration is nothing but I, uh, I have a previous value R is equal to 100 ohms. Let us consider simply for example 100 ohms. Now I have used a device with two leads. These two leads are used to detect the moisture. I have attached these two leads to a device which for which you I want to measure the moisture content. Okay this is the moisture measuring device. This is the 
example device okay now these two leads when this particular two leads touches this device what happens the resistance of this particular inside material of this uh, moisture measuring device may vary from 100 100 ohms to like 500 ohms okay depending upon the moisture content present here so the moisture content here changes the resistance inside this device so that the calibration the meter will show some deflection on the scale on the scale so for this change how much change is there 400 ohms so for this change there is a movement in the meter there is a movement in the meter 0 1 2 3 4 and so on like this we have a scale reading calibration is there so this calibration has to be priorly done how much is the resistance change how much is the moisture change this ratio proportional ratio should be maintained before the calibration before the device has to be used in the market so the calibration is accomplished by comparing the dielectric a reading to a known moisture for the sample very simple so, so always the unknown volt unknown uh, measurement can be compared with the known measurement so that uh, some calibration should be done that means we need to design the scale before the product is developed a graph is prepared and used to provide the translation of the electrical characteristics to the amount of moisture in the material sample so the automated instrument these tables the automation instrument these tables are proposed by a computer to give reading in the moisture okay so optical and electromagnetic energy this is another type of moisture uh, how we are measuring this using this optical and electromagnetic energy applications of the concepts of reflection and absorption of electromagnetic energy is becoming widely used particularly for inline and arc inline or online measurements these techniques based on the finding that water has very specific absorption online graphics wavelength near infrared nir near infrared and microwave technology are the most commonly used uh, methods for measuring this moisture although the techniques of nir and microwave are different they both are based on the concept of absorption of electromagnetic energy in these tests the absorption of the wavelengths associated with water are compared to the reference wavelength when the moisture of the calibration sample is known the absorption results can be reference results can be referenced to the moisture so what is going on here is when the moisture content is changed in the product what you are going to measure what we are doing some electromagnetic energy absorbed by this moisture content and the device will indicate the corresponding change in the calibration chart okay so this type of method generally known as near infrared and microwave technology that uses most commonly in the laboratories where the moisture content has to be measured with the help of this radiation or electromagnetic energy okay so such type of measurement comes under optical and electromagnetic energy uh, kind method of measurement of the moisture so this is completely about uh, the measurement of moisture content yeah that is nothing but a physical quantity moisture how it is going to be measured thank you